Welcome to the Tax and Subjects Podcast. I'm Ryan Norton, and today I'm joined by two members of the Drake Education Team, Director of Education, Christine Reynolds. Welcome to the show. Hello. And the Tax Team Lead, Amanda Watson. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to have you both. And today, if you're listening in right now, um, we're just a day or two away from June, which means it's continuing education season for tax professionals. So with that in mind, we thought it might be a good idea to talk about the AFSP. Um, before I get into that, I would I kind of want to just do a little bit of background on AFSP uh, with a program called the Registered Tax Return uh, Preparers Program, or RTRP. And we won't spend too much time on that, but um, it did, at the time, um, in 2010, establish some minimum standards for tax professionals. Um, among those standards were, say, you had to have a P-10, right, and you had to have 15 hours of continuing education. Um, and with that program, CPAs, attorneys, EAs, they were all exempt. In 2013, there was a court ruling that said that the IRS did not have the authority to establish a credentialing system. Um, so that meant RTRP went away. Um, in 2014, we saw the AFSP. So uh, let's just get started with basics then. Uh, Amanda, what is the annual filing season program? Well, thanks, Ryan. The annual filing season program is an IRS program which is voluntary. Um, tax return preparers can participate if they wish, but it is um, in an attempt to recognize the non-credential tax return preparer who increased their knowledge through continuing education credits. Well, that's the basics of it. What are the requirements? So uh, the main difference between AFSP and RTRP, well, I'm sure there are m multiple differences, but one of the main ones is that RTRP was required if you were a tax professional. AFSP was voluntary. Um, what are um, some of the requirements for fulfilling the annual filing season program? This is a yearly program, so every year it's you have to participate if you're interested in participating. And um, some of the requirements include getting your P-10, which is a requirement for any tax return preparer. And then you have to complete an annual tax refresher course. And the IRS dictates what information must be presented to the tax preparer on the annual federal tax refresher course. And Drake Software is an approved provider of the annual tax refresher course. So as a preparer who is interested in earning an IRS record of completion, you have to get your PT in, take an annual federal tax refresher course, and then you have to complete continuing education. And the amount of continuing education you need to complete in addition to the tax refresher course has to do with whether you're considered exempt or not exempt. And Amanda can tell you the difference between exempt and non-exempt, because it does make a difference. Because yeah, I know that, like I said, uh, RTRP let certain designations be exempt. Is that the case with AFSP? It is the same with the annual filing season program. For those who are CPAs, enrolled agents, enrolled actuaries, tax return attorneys, and a few other individuals, such as um, folks who have passed the enrolled agent exam part one, and there's a few others, they are exempt from the after portion of the education requirements. They are still required to earn those CPE, but they're a little different and they don't need to take the after course. What does the after course kind of look like? What, what kind of topics um, do education teams cover? Um, I know that this year we had a, a big change, um, specific to tax year 2018 is when uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, mm -hmm. the majority of it takes place and, and affects uh, tax or taxpayers and tax professionals alike. Um, so what, what is being covered in after courses? Well, just as Christine says, the IRS sends everyone who is an approved provider of the after course an outline. And that outline changes annually. And as you can imagine, as we're gearing up for the 2019 filing season, this course is heavily um, infused with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So it's divided up into three domains. The first domain um, usually covers new tax law or inflation adjustments. So this year with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, it is infused with 
all of that information, and it is only per pertaining to individual tax returns. The second domain is a general review of tax return preparation. The third domain is um, procedures ethics, um, a, a bit of ethics in there. And then there is a test or an exam that's required. It's a 100 question test that is um, the preparer has up to three hours to take the test and they must pass the, the test in order to complete the after portion of the requirements. It's a voluntary program. Right. What do you tell people who would say something like, you know, I understand the value of learning more about my profession and um, being more of an expert in tax preparation uh, to market myself. But if it's voluntary, why would I spend that amount of time in a classroom? Well, you're right, there is value in education, but there are two other distinct advantages to earning the annual filing season record of completion. And the first is, if you participate, you are included in the IRS Directory of Tax Return Preparers with Credentials and Select Qualification. And what that means is a taxpayer can go to the IRS.gov um, website, search for tax preparers who are, um, meet certain credentials in their area, and participants of the program will show on the directory along with enrolled agents, CPAs, tax attorneys, etc. So there is that advantage. And another is that you have um, limited representation rights as a participant. Um, if an unenrolled preparer does not participate, they have no representation rights. So basically, uh, you take the test, you learn more about what's upcoming for the next year, right. you get listed with the IRS, so there's a great marketing opportunity Absolutely. for yourself to set yourself apart from other professionals in your area uh, and to show that you have a um, area of mastery that, if not commensurate with, is at least listed alongside with CPAs and EAs. Correct. All right. Yeah. And you get to represent your client. You have some representation yeah. rights In instead of tax none. Courts. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> some is way better than none. <laughs> um, so we we kind of have a good outline of what the program is and what benefits there are. So what can Drake Software do? Since you're the Drake Software Education Team, what are some things that Drake Software can do to help tax professionals who want to participate in the AFSP? We have been offering the annual federal tax refresher course since the beginning. We offered the RTRP course back in the day and we jumped right into the annual federal tax refresher course and it's available online. Ours is self-study format and Amanda works on that course for us each year on updating it and ensuring that it's um, complete and accurate and a really great course. So in addition to taking that annual federal tax refresher course on Drake CPE, we have all the other continuing education available on Drake CPE. You don't have to just take your credits on Drake CPE. Maybe you went to an IRS forum. Those credits may apply towards your additional hours that are required, or maybe you went to an update school, a Drake software update school. But it's really important that you not only take the, the actual after course, but you take the associated continuing education credit and so we provide tons of resources we have a web page yes. that provides all the information that you need in one place drakesoftware.com slash afsp yep and um, on our website we have all the resources and education that you need to understand what the after is and be able to meet all the after requirements all right what are so those are some opportunities for tax professionals who who want to participate available from Drake. Um, what are some common issues that people do face though whenever they embark on um, going through with the program, taking the after test? Um, what what are some things that people can expect to or people who have done this who have faced these problems? What are some issues people have faced as they went through the program? Well, um, one thing that I can think of is waiting too late to start. Because it is a six, at the after course alone is a six hour course with a three hour exam. If you wait until the very last day of the year, you're gonna be cramming in a lot, very, in a very short amount of time. Um, and 
again, there are additional education requirements in addition to the after course. That's a biggie too. Yes. And I have to comment on that, Amanda. It's amazing how many people want to take the after course on New Year's Eve. At 6 p.m. At 6 (laughs) p.m. Because you know that you have to get all of the requirements in within the calendar year. And so midnight local time is when the cutoff date is. And so if you haven't completed your continuing education and you haven't passed your after course, then you have not met your requirements. And that is unfortunately something that we do face when we're assisting our clients. What website would someone go to? I know you mentioned, um, let's see, you mentioned the drakesoftware.com backslash AFSP. Um, So drakecpe.com. But you could also go to drakeetc.com. Some of the courses on that website offer continuing education. Mm -hmm. If you come to classroom training, if you go to an update school, any other Anything I'm missing? Well, this year um, we are giving our customers the opportunity to attend classroom training via a live webcast. So that's something new that we're doing, and you can earn CPE for that. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. great. That is exciting. Exciting. Yes. And one thing that's really important that I'm going to take this opportunity to mention is Drake Software. We, as an education team, always make available to our clients CPE details. And within those CPE details, we list exactly the continuing education you'll receive for attending a specific class. So it's very important to look at those CPE details and make sure that the class meets the category of continuing education that you're looking for. Because you may take the Drake Accounting class and that doesn't apply at all towards the after requirements. So that's just something that you should look for if you're out there. If you're not looking at a course offered by Drake Software and you're going to another provider, you want to make sure that you understand what category those credits fall under. So you're not, you know, it's New Year's Eve and you're rushing to take some ethics course or in another federal tax course because you didn't meet your requirements. That's a great tip. People often overlook those CPE de- details. Yes. Really yes. All right. One of the big takeaways from today definitely is uh, plan ahead. Don't wait to the last yes. minute. <laughs> um, speaking of planning ahead, when can someone, what's the first date available for someone to take one of your courses? Well, right now we have lots of courses available. So you can get started on your continuing education requirements for this calendar year, for the next filing season during this calendar year. So any course you've taken after January 1st, 2018 is going to fall in within this calendar year. You have to pass it within the calendar year for it to count. Right. And the after course will be available shortly after June 1st. Yes. No provider can offer it until June 1st. So basically, in just a couple of days, so when you're hearing this, uh, it is probably available. Yep. So visit those Drake websites. All right, and Christine, um, just how many people do participate each year in the uh, annual filing season program? A good number of people. And the number of folks that are participating, number of preparers that are participating in the program, it, it is increasing every year. We have heard from the IRS that last year there were just under 62,000 participants in the annual filing season program. So I think preparers are really seeing the value in the program, and they're wanting to participate and get in that database. Yeah. And we definitely encourage our non-credentialed preparers to participate because we think it is valuable. So, Amanda, before we we sign off today, how... Are you supposed to track all this stuff if you're a tax professional? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, One thing that you want to do when you take a course, you always want to be sure to get a copy of your certificate and keep it um, on file in case the IRS asks for it. But the IRS makes it really easy to track what CPE um, credits that you've earned and what field of study each of those fall in. You simply go to your online P10 account, log in, and there's a record of all of your continuing education for the year. Each provider, um, like Drake Software, as soon as um, you earn the, the credit, will upload your credit to the IRS. So it's very simple to log in and track what you've already earned and what you still need. And as soon for the F annual filing season program, as soon as you 
hit all of those continuing education courses, you'll get a message um, letting you know that you've done that and it'll give you instructions of how to um, finish up your requirements, which um, include agreeing to some Circular 230 requirements. All right, so AFSP gets you ready. It's mm -hmm. easy to find places to go to take it. It's easy to keep track of what you need to do, what you've already done. Thank you both for being here, Christine, Amanda. Thanks, Ryan. I'm sure we'll talk to you all again soon. Um, and that'll be it for the podcast today. We'll see you all on the next Taxi Subject Podcast. Goodbye. Thank you.